Things change, we move to 8-bit computers. So we now have a whole extra number at the start, uh, just to confuse matters, which means we can go to 256. Um, we can have twice as many characters. IBM-compatible PCs came along, uh, and they decided, well, what we're going to do is, in those high numbers, above 128, what we're going to do is we're going to put maybe a few accented characters so that's kind of useful. Maybe a pound sign in there might be, if, if you're in Britain. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Some computers didn't. And then we're going to put lots of little lines and boxes so you can draw, you know, nice little interfaces and things that say hello, and then double lines and smiley faces and wonderful things like that. It's PCs. Mac computers went, oh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to put loads of accented characters in and some nice typographical symbols so you can mark up your documents properly. Of course, the two won't talk to each other. And meanwhile, loads of other countries are going, oh, yeah, OK, yeah, screw you guys. We're going to set up our own systems. An old system like uh, that, that has been programmed well will take those nice curly quotes that Microsoft Word has put into Unicode and it will look at that and say that is three separate characters from somewhere above 128 in ASCII, and it will convert it into something that looks like uh, that. And that's why, that is why, when you paste those curly quotes into old systems, everything gets messed up. It's because somehow we have settled on a standard, and not everyone has caught up with it yet. And that's the beauty of it. It more or less works. It hasn't messed up everything. It hasn't completely destroyed everything. We don't have that uh, mojibake that, that Japanese has. We have something that nearly works.